G'day everyone and welcome again to the Race Academy webinar series. We are up to episode 27. How exciting the day has come and the year is already well away and well established. We hope you all are into 2023, just like uh, Christmas was yesterday. But off we go again. And today we have chairs, our critical chair side oral health instructions for removable dental appliances. And what an awesome topic today. Um, one that's been highly requested, one that's highly sought after. Um, but before I introduce our guest speaker today, I'll just let the last few people signing on now come on board. We do have a lot of registrants today, I can see from Australia. Get everyone from Australia and New Zealand, um, the US, Singapore, and of course, Malaysia. Welcome everyone down in Malaysia. We look forward to teaching what we have today. And I can see there's a mad scramble for the last few people here. So whilst that's happening, I'll just let you know that um, we're hoping that everyone can join us uh, at ACAS 23, the Clear Alignment Symposium, which is 17th and 18th of February. Come and visit us at Stand 27. Brad will be there with Felix giving away free hugs. So be sure to come on down and get one of those. We'll also have a Stand 566 at ADX 23 in Melbourne. So if you do get a chance during March 30th through April 1, come and see the race team. I'll be down there. Come along and visit us down at Stand 566. Remembering that we also are finalists for the educational initiative for the Race Webinar Academy series. And we're also finalists for innovation for race's latest and most dynamic and growing product, digital dentures. So come along. Visit Tony Race down there. He'll talk you through how and when to use those. But um, with no further ado, I can see everyone on board today. It's a very special day for two reasons. Firstly, it's Valentine's Day. Secondly, we have one of the best speakers, in my opinion, on the on the Australian circuit today, um, Mark Wertherspoon. Um, Mark's been in this game for a long time. He will explain to us the what, the how, and the why for oral health instructions for removable prosthesis. So with no further ado, Mark, welcome. Oh, look, thanks very much, Matt. And uh, the, the background to today's presentation is that uh, we, we better understand the close link these days between uh, dirty uh, dental appliances and oral health. We understand better the close or the direct link between dirty dental appliances and general health. Uh, and the, uh, but the reality is our patients mostly, uh, they, they understand uh, and acknowledge the health issues, but really they just want clean dental appliances that smell good. Uh, and the reality is also is that for, for years now, we've just been recommending or not recommending these funny little brushes uh, that have a long handle and are very good for brushing things inside the mouth, uh, but not so good for brushing things outside the mouth. Uh, and I know that we can do a lot, a lot better. So let's dive into the presentation now. And I would like to firstly acknowledge the traditional owners of the land, the Wiradjuri people from uh, the, the land in which uh, this presentation is being uh, given. Uh, and welcome to all of the guests in Australia, New Zealand and around the world. And I think it's quite wonderful to know that for tens of thousands of years, uh, people have been gathering to share knowledge uh, and, and hopefully to entertain a little bit. Um, and you can be sure that a lot of that knowledge was regarding health. So why is it critical? Uh, why do we need to change? Uh, what are the consequences of poor oral health relating to dirty dental appliances? How can we do better? How can our patients benefit? And what should we be recommending in this 21st century that's different to what we were recommending 50 years ago? And then finally, how can we make the dental professional's job easier and save time in delivering those oral hygiene, important oral hygiene instructions? Well, we're going to dive deep into the, the germs, specifically which germs are causing the problems. We're then going to find out uh, how well our patients are doing with regards to their denture hygiene and dental appliance hygiene, what's available on the internet, what the dental industry is recommending, what the dental profession is recommending, and then we'll have a look at the actual science behind uh, what should then make up the, the important thread of our professional oral hygiene instructions that we're delivering chairside and how we can deliver that quite simply and easily. Here I am down in the bowels of Amy Stadium in Melbourne delivering a, a, an oral hygiene uh, instruction um, 
to a group of professional rugby union, women rugby union players. We're talking about the importance of sports mouth guard hygiene. And this article from the Journal of Sports Medicine shows us that on mouth guards, we have over 350 different types of bacteria, one of which was golden staph, uh, but not that often. Uh, but then also uh, over 100 different types of mold and yeast, uh, one of which was actually penicillin. Uh, the bad news was that this particular type of penicillin and a couple of the other spores uh, do go on to cause and are directly linked to necrotizing esophagitis, which of course is to do with your gut, uh, and also a direct link to sports-induced asthma. And this British Journal of Biomedical Sciences uh, showed us that denture plaque uh, actually differs from dental plaque in that it can contain or does contain higher levels of golden staph and not surprisingly candida albicans. Uh, and this is closely linked to increased levels of dental decay, periodontal disease and denture stomatitis. Uh, we also know these days that oral health and uh, oral disease is closely linked to endocarditis, aspiration pneumonia, and other types of infections of the gut, amongst many other problems. And the link to dementia now is, has been basically proven beyond doubt, and that dentures act as a reservoir for these, uh, these bad germs. So how well are our patients doing at the moment? Well, let's now lean on this uh, article in the British Dental Journal uh, and reported by the Dental Association in, in, uh, over in Britain. And unfortunately, it shows after this audit that uh, nearly 90% of our patients are in the two worst categories for denture hygiene. This is backed up by a 2017 review in the Journal of Dental Hygiene, which showed clearly that our denture, the, the attitudes of the denture wearers are not conformed to the recommended guidelines. What were the attitudes and habits uh, of the uh, of their patients? Well, brushing was the most common form of denture hygiene. No surprise there. Patients or patients who only brushed a couple of times a week showed poor cleanliness. Patients brushing three to four times a day showed uh, excellent cleanliness. But on average, patients were brushing about once a day. Interestingly, only about a quarter were wear using uh, soaking tablets on a regular basis. Uh, and just over 50% of patients uh, were leaving their dentures in at night. Uh, I thought also interesting was that the girls were doing better than the boys and are more likely to leave their dentures out at night as we recommend. This interesting article uh, from the BDJ on the uh, knowledge of removable partial denture wearers uh, indicated quite clearly that there should be no reason for failing to give full instructions and advice on denture hygiene to all of our patients. The important part of this research was that verbal instructions only showed that there was a very, there was a 40% exhibited poor denture cleanliness, whereas when we combined verbal instructions chair side with written instructions, then it was down to just over 10% who had poor denture hygiene. So clearly our patients are actually reading, or some of our patients are actually reading those handouts that we handle, uh, that we give to our patients. And this is actually quite important. All of the dentists questioned in, in this uh, report uh, said that uh, aftercare was important, how only about, a, only about a fifth of people actually organized that follow-up. Uh, and that it was also important that at the six and 12 month uh, dental exams, we did assess a patient's denture hygiene and reinforce uh, the denture hygiene message. And it also concluded that our patients are simply confused and uninformed as to how they should be cleaning them. And although cleaning their denture at home was their own responsibility, it was our responsibility as dentists and dental professionals uh, we are obliged to motivate the individuals and instruct them on their home care routines. And maybe the dental profession ourselves, maybe we're all a little bit confused. And let's look at this Cochrane review that had a warning. They tried to look into all of the research behind denture hygiene, and they determined that only a surprisingly small number of studies was found to be suitable for inclusion in this review, because all studies presented a high risk of bias, mainly due to problems associated with selective outcome reporting. So we have to be a little bit careful when we're reading the science. 
And this uh, report, uh, well, this uh, speech given by Dr. Nigel Carter at the FDI Congress uh, found that people with dentures simply do not know how they should be cleaning them. And it was no surprise that people are confused given the inconsistent and often unproven advice uh, often found on the internet and that this was frightening. Just want to step aside while we're talking on dentures to highlight, in fact, that a program that Matt mentioned at the start. And I just want to give a great big thank you to, to uh, Brad, Tony and Matt for this project that we've been involved in recently. And here we are going into a dementia ward at one of my local aged care facilities. Uh, and we're doing digital scans for patients who already have their dentures or uh, who require a partial denture. Uh, and you can see this, this particular resident uh, has already dropped their existing dentures. Uh, and you can have a, you don't have to be a dentist to see that trying to make a new set of dentures on that lower ridge would be very, very difficult. Um, so we're going to get, use digital scanning and digital technology to scan their existing dentures. Before we do that, we're going to make sure that the dentures are nice and clean. And you can see me here using uh, the Hygiene. We'll talk a little bit more about that later on, but so important prior to the scanning process uh, to have a clean uh, surface in which to scan on. You can see the soap foaming up there. And then Tony and one of his team stepped in and scanned their denture. All of this is happening out of the mouth uh, for full dentures. And uh, certainly if there are uh, uh, some natural teeth there, well, then we can scan those for partial dentures as well. Uh, and you can see the result. Absolutely unbelievable. And in this case, we did provide our patients with a new set. They were over the moon with their brand new dentures. But importantly for patients in the dementia ward, if the dentures go missing for any reason or dropped and broken for any reason, and it's impossible for me to clinically make a new set, uh, I can ring up race, they can press a button and 3D mill a new set uh, very, very uh, inexpensively, very quickly and in a very timely manner. The second most uh, prevalent type of removable dental appliance though is uh, sports mouth guards made from EVA uh, and or ethyl vinyl acetate. Uh, in fact, uh, EVA is used for mouth guards, but it's more commonly used for floor coverings and hoses. The advantages of EVA is it's perfect for, for sports mouth guard. It's tough and it's resilient, but it does have a poor resistance to tear and abrasion. So we do have to be very careful how we store it and how we clean it. And a close-up view of EVA shows these little dimples on the surface. So clearly, simply brushing that or rinsing that's not going to be good enough. We do have to brush it with some sort of washing compound. And mould is a very, very serious issue for all dental appliances. And I'll quickly refer to this US government uh, panel that was developed to look at how mould can affect uh, health for patients who have just been through uh, hurricanes and major floods. It determined that molds, the factors that produce mold are moisture and nutrients and damp, warm environments are best. And the primary factors that limit the growth of mold are a lack of moisture. We can learn from this. The factors that could cause disease from mold are inhalation, skin contact and ingestion. So there's the mouth. You know, we know that the mouth is the gateway to the lungs. It's the gateway to the gut. And those dental appliances are in close contact with the mucosa. So uh, intermittent uh, uh, exposure will uh, sensitize a person with these molds going in and out of the mouth like little germ factories all the time. And this can lead directly to hay fever or asthma uh, symptoms, which were prominent. It can also, with long-term use, lead to other inflammatory diseases of the respiratory system. So, you know, this is getting very, very important and critical. To prevent mold, wash surfaces with soap and clean water and air dry. And I thought it was quite funny that even the American Home Brewers Forum takes mold prevention on their EVA more seriously than the dental profession. Our patients are just throwing that sports mouth guard in the bottom of the sports bag and growing mold all over the place. Uh, the good news, though, was that no matter how much mold is on your sports mouth guard, it's not going to affect its ability to protect your teeth, but it will affect your general health. Let's quickly turn now to orthodontic appliances. Uh, they're made from all sorts of different materials, but commonly a multi-layer of thermoplastic polyurethane and copolyester. 
which is used in dentistry a lot, but it's more commonly used in all sorts of other, uh, you know, car parts, floor coatings, even shoes. And it's used there because it's tough and it's shiny, corrosion resistant, and it's really, really hard and has a smooth surface. Nylon is another material that's being used very commonly, uh, and the patients love them because they're nice and comfortable. Quickly on nylon, uh, and let's just remember back to in the 1930s that Nylon 6 was first discovered in 1935 by the DuPont, um, uh, DuPont chemist. It actually comes out of, out of the ground um, and uh, as an oil first. And it was first, one of its first uses was replacing hog bristle toothbrushes. So thank goodness, you know, for that. <clears throat> but if we're going to look at cleaning nylon in the outside world, so in the non dental world, uh, let's take a, a leaf out of the clothing industry, which recommends for nylon using cold water, uh, never use chlorine, uh, and to drip dry. So, you know, if we don't give our patients instructions that they understand and are easily uh, and, and, and messages that they can take home with them, they go online. And just a quick warning, this is where things get pretty messed up. The, world, the number one Google search is, shows up on the Mayo Clinic. Uh, it advises to remove dentures from the mouth. So some of our patients aren't even getting that message. Always important to lay down a towel on the surface or put a few inches of water in a basin. Uh, we'll see an, an option, a, a, a different option for that later on. You must use a soft brush and a non-abrasive denture cleaner. So if you do nothing else than just stop recommending toothpaste for your dentures and your dental appliances, that's a good start. They do, however, recommend soaking dentures overnight to recommend to, to keep their shape. We'll bust that myth wide open a little bit later on, and the reasons why. And then they also recommend that we thoroughly rinse all of our denture uh, cleaning solutions off because they're really quite toxic. And then we look at the number two Google search, which again, lay down a towel, put some inches of water in there. It gets, you can use a nail brush if you want, which I, I'll talk a little bit about later on, baking soda and salt. Uh, but then simply brush your dentures with an antibacterial soap or dishwashing liquid. And when everything else, if you have nothing else, you always have free air, it goes on to say, because due to the misconception that dentures must be kept in water and not when not in the mouth. Most people do not realise that oxygen can kill yeast. Big tick there, and we'll prove that later on. Many other, and many other bacteria, therefore leaving your dentures on a clean, dry surface overnight can help to disinfect them. So already levels of confused messaging in the one and two Google searches. Quick note on nail brushes, please, if you are recommending this, go out and try it yourself. Those bristles are really quite stiff and they, they catch on partial denture clasps. They also don't get underneath any undercuts on the labial flanges of your full dentures. And the number three Google search is back to soaking in water overnight to maintain their shape. So, you know, our patients are going online and they're getting all sorts of confused messages. If we have a look at the Invisalign website, and this has been very well researched and tested, they're recommending simply a crystal. Uh, you put it in a, in a container, uh, let it soak and give it a shake. So they're then relying on that sort of shaking action to clean the bacteria. And then people, the second orthodontic referral is from Orthodontics Australia, which recommends an antibacterial uh, soap with a spare toothbrush, they're recommending mechanical action, uh, mechanical brushing, which I'm a big supporter of, and you'll see the research behind this later, and then some denture cleaning tablets. So again, more mixed messaging. The Australian Dental Association, let's turn to our professional bodies now on dentures, recommends brushing your dentures daily using a soft hand soap, do not use toothpaste, soak your dentures daily, leave your dentures out at night, Keep them in a safe, dry place and visit your dentist regularly. Our ADA on sports mouth guards. Again, soap, so important. Use a soft toothbrush or nail brush they're recommending and then store your mouth guard in a clean, rigid, ventilated plastic container and keep your mouth guard away from sunlight and heat. The American Dental Association. Rinse your denture, soak your dentures as per manufacturer's instructions. Denture cleaning pastes and gels are typically meant to be brushed on the denture, so a big tick there. But then it's back to um, 
wet storage, and we'll see why that's not quite right anymore. It used to be okay, but not anymore. Uh, and then uh, as an alternative, uh, you can use toothpaste or soap uh, with a soft brush, an alternative to your uh, denture cleaners. So again, some are recommending toothpaste and some aren't. The Canadian Dental Association, soak them overnight. You can use water and white vinegar. And look, you know, that's the one that we've been re all recommending for years and years is the white vinegar. It works because it's acidic and it'll dissolve any calculus uh, from developing uh, on your dental appliance. I think, uh, you know, have you ever tried that yourself? Your, your dental appliance smells like, I used to use it for my splint, ends up smelling like fish and chips for about a week and a half and it gives it that sort of little tinge. But uh, better than that is to prevent calculus from developing in the first place. And of course, they're saying metal clasps, uh, don't use it uh, because it can upset the, uh, the metal-based clasps on your partial dentures. Oral Health Foundation, Global Task Force, uh, sponsored by GSK, but no editorial influence, use a mechanical action with a non-abrasive cleaner, daily soaking, leave your dentures out at night um, to prevent uh, denture stomatitis and regular recalls as part of your maintenance program. So now let's have a look at what the actual experts and the science has to say and try and bust through some of this mixed messaging. And we're going to rely heavily on the therapeutic guidelines. Uh, we'll look at that closely. We'll then see how soap actually works, some brushing options, some soaking options, and then we'll finally bust that dry storage versus wet storage issue. Now, here are the therapeutic guidelines, which have been developed by a group of very fiercely independent uh, medical and dental professionals. And I will read this out verbatim because each line is actually important. Dentures, and this will form the foundation of our recommended guidelines, dentures should be regularly cleaned twice a day to remove food particles and plaque. Advise patients to remove dentures from the mouth and clean them with warm water, mild soap, and a toothbrush, denture brush, or soft nail brush. Avoid cleaning dentures with hot water, toothpaste, kitchen detergents, laundry bleaches, methyl added spirits, and a few others. Patients should clean their gums and teeth with the soft toothbrush and toothpaste. So don't forget the, the mouth also. Advise patients to place dentures in a dry environment overnight after cleaning them. Traditionally, it was recommended that dentures were kept in liquid overnight. However, Allowing the clean dentures to dry out at night is more effective in reducing yeast colonization and plaque accumulation compared with both denture cleaners and water. Although repeated cycles of hydration and dehydration can change the shape of the denture, these changes are small and not clinically significant. It then reiterates the dry storage important message. If you do have hard deposits, you can try the vinegar solution or refer it to your dentist for cleaning, professional cleaning. And then it goes on to say that if your patient does have uh, denture stomatitis, then uh, dry, dry storage uh, is important and it can take about a month for the symptoms to go away. But essentially manual brush with a soap-based product and then dry storage are the key messages. So how does soap actually work? Well, the soap molecule actually has a little balloon end and then a little tail end. And that's that little tail end that burrows its way into the plaque and the food scraps and the oils that are collecting and growing on your dental appliance. And then we're going to mechanically disturb that biofilm with a brush. And then when we're rinsing with fresh water, the, the balloon end uh, or the hydrophilic end is picked up and it all gets washed away. And that's actually how soap works and why it's so important. So what are some soap options? Well, the only denture-specific soap option that you'll find at the supermarket is this one by Steridant, which actually, unfortunately, uh, in my opinion, has some titanium dioxide in it, So it's and it's suitable. It, it says on its packet it's suitable for natural teeth as well. So clearly it's just a type of, of toothpaste. We can use dishwashing soap, if you like, or hand soap. Got to be a little bit careful with the pH because that's up, it's quite alkaline. So it'll work, but it's not going to prevent that calculus from growing on your uh, on your dental appliance. Uh, the uh, Curapox have a nice soap based product. And then there's the Dr. Mark's Dental Fresh. And when we were developing that, we had the soap based, but we've adjusted the pH down to 5.0. So it'll slowly reduce 
uh, calculus on your dental appliance. And here you can see an example of what I call a dental rescue. Uh, that's where, you know, calculus is obviously built up on the appliance. And over two weeks, using it a couple of times a day, you can even soak it in the, in the dental fresh for, uh, you know, a few minutes. It'll dissolve your existing calculus and you can see the result. But far better than that is to start using your dental fresh from the word go and to prevent this calculus from developing in the first place. Also excellent for your tooth whitening trays and it'll wash out uh, all of that whitening gel. So some brush options. Well, you know, fair to say that the toothbrush and the dental brush uh, will work if it's used fastidiously. And if our patients, you know, get in there and clean every surface, uh, it will work. But um, we, we know our patients don't do that. They simply waft the toothbrush or the denture brush over the surface of the, of the dental appliance. Uh, much better to use a sure grip, which is just simply a, a, a much bigger surface area. So if they simply waft it over the top, they're going to be covering a much larger area. Uh, we've got a handle which is designed to clean things outside of the mouth because, you know, we're cleaning our appliances outside of the mouth. And we've also got uh, the brush, which can, which we recommend is replaced every three to four months, uh, just like you would a toothbrush. Um, and the handle will last for ages and ages. Uh, also good, I know a lot of dental practitioners are getting into their airway management now. And here's a nasal dilator. I, this is how I clean mine with a sports mouth guard spray. We'll touch on that a little bit later on. But our denture cleaning products are excellent for those respiratory products as well. Every single uh, cleaning recommendation says to lay down a towel or put water in a basin. Uh, this is a major issue when patients, you know, how many times where patients drop them or the dog, you know, gets hold of them and runs away with it. So here's the hygiene, which is a, which is a protected brushing environment. So if you are worried about your patients dropping their appliance or if they're not cleaning every surface every time, the hygiene is a good option. Certainly in aged care, they don't even have plugs in the sinks in aged care. So and there's no room for a towel. So it's critical that we use the hygiene in aged care. It comes with a soaking bath, and we'll see that uh, soaking your appliance periodically is actually important as long as we don't do it too much. Uh, and again, the brushes can be replaced uh, every three to four months, and that is important. This incredibly, I, I thought this fascinating research article on uh, patients who already have oral uh, denture stomatitis or oral thrush, they measured the candida uh, on their fingertips, and they found that they had a much higher candida count or, uh, you know, fungal infections on their fingertips if they had denture stomatitis and that this could spread to other parts of the body. So if your patients have denture stomatitis, you must warn them about hand hygiene. Fortunately, the same research showed that the, the traffic was all one way in that uh, thrush in other parts of the body can't uh, go back up into the mouth. This Belgium study on comparing ultrasonic uh, to denture brushing. Uh, both methods actually were not entirely uh, good at removing all of the denture plaque. It did make a difference, but it didn't clean all of the plaque off. And that was mainly due to the, uh, the rough surface roughness of our acrylics and our other um, dental appliance materials. And that an ultrasonic cleaning solution uh, was actually similar in its uh, cleaning ability to uh, brushing. And this uh, uh, French study backed that up. And here they are, they had supervised brushing over a two week period. And even after all of that, there was still some plaque remaining on the dental appliances. So this tells us that simply brushing, even with soap, is not enough on its own. And this is where we need to look at our dry storage and intermittent soaking as adjuncts to this first, these first steps. Just wanna take a quick little Step to the side on uh, to talk about denture adhesives very, very briefly. And this global task force tells us we're obliged not just to hand our patients some denture adhesives if they're struggling with retention. We need to show them how to use it because they're not using it correctly. And that also none of the cleaning techniques recommended by the manufacturers themselves. So what's on the box was entirely effective in removing the dental adhesives off these appliances. When we are recommending the use of denture adhesives, it's important that they're applied to a clean and dry surface, another big tick for dry storage. And then before sleep, we need to clean those dental appliances of all of the denture adhesives. 
soft linings, and we know that this is important sometimes, need to be really, really careful. Rinse that uh, soft lining appliance, Use must use a soft brush, and maybe just with a soap-based product, and then just a 10-minute uh, soak in an alkaline hypochlorite solution, and then store it overnight without a cleanser or water. So I'm going to assume that that's dry storage. This Belgian study, again, wet storage with a soaking tablet, showed us that uh, with mechanical brushing and a soaking tablet, it was quite effective in reducing the amount of bacteria on the dental appliance. But in this particular study, it showed almost no effect on candida. And candida for us is, is the big one, you know, because that's the one that's going to go on and cause that dentist stomatitis. I thought that was very interesting. And this study in Japan uh, showed that a combination of mechanical brushing with and then without soaking. And look at this, you know, if you read it, it's they're using their denture brushing and soaking three times a day for two minutes. My gosh, I can barely get my patients to, to brush their dental appliance for 30 seconds once a day. But, you know, this was, that's what it was. And it showed that uh, brushing with chemical soaking was more effective in cleaning those dentures. Plenty of soaking options available. Please go out and have a look at all of them. They actually all work uh, quite well, but they're all quite different. This uh, oral health and preventive dentistry journal article showed that the hypochlorite was most effective in killing the plaque, uh, the germs in plaque, and you only had to soak for 10 minutes. <clears throat> Alkaline peroxides, they like to see them immersed for 30 minutes, and that produced a cleanliness effectiveness similar to that used by brushing with liquid soap and water. Simply dentures running the water, uh, your appliance under running water uh, was almost useless in removing the biofilm. And lots and lots of warnings about removing, washing off the soaking solutions. Uh, they can, they are a dangerous chemical. So please, uh, when we're recommending, if and when we're recommending those, they need to be stored uh, very, very safely. I thought this was an incredible um, article in, uh, by the Journal of uh, Biomaterials lately in 2021, uh, and it, it looked at the colour stability and surface roughness of uh, properties of PWMA or acrylic soaking as per manufacturer's instructions. And here we can see that the baseline, which was neutral, uh, showed very little or no change. The alkaline peroxide showed some roughening, roughness, uh, and certainly the bleaches or the, you know, showed quite a significant change to the surface roughness. So, you know, we do need to use these because they are important, but we need to be very careful how they're used and certainly make sure our patients aren't over soaking. When I road tested these myself, and I recommend you do the same, uh, they're all, they, as I said before, they all work. Uh, there's my dad on the right-hand side. He preferred the eucalyptus smell of the Curaprox. So soaking uh, vessels, take your choice. The Hygiene uh, does come with its own soaking bath, which doubles down as a travel container. Okay, dry storage. We knew way back in 1986 uh, that this was an issue, uh, and this article you know, identify the fact that generally dentists are told to prevent acrylic uh, dentures from drying out as they'll undergo dimensional change. But it way back then told us that this was dry storage was the most effective way in reducing that candida colonization and that the dimensional changes, which were acknowledged, were so small that they were clinically insignificant and that it's best for treating, treating dentures stomatitis. And then let's move forward to 2020, something a little bit more recent. Uh, cleaning and dry storage are best as per the 2020 Journal of uh, Prosthetic Dentistry. But if no cleaning was possible at all, then soaking in an alkaline solution was recommended or simply dry storage alone. I thought it was interesting, simply storing in water. So if you just stick it in a glass of water may even promote oral thrush. And the 2020 Geneva Journal of Geriodontology again recommending um, cleansing tablets combined with dried storage. So we're starting to get a feel for what the, the science is telling us. And certainly for our frail elderly or anybody with any immune system problems, wearing our dentures at night doubled the risk 
of aspiration pneumonia uh, as per this Japanese study, which was uh, very well thought of, regarded. Let's talk about mouth sports mouth guard storage now. And we know that after washing with soap and mechanical brushing, if we place our sports mouth guard in a ventilated storage container, then bacteria were no longer detected after a couple of days. But when stored, beg your pardon, when stored in a closed environment, bacteria were detected for up to 14 days after. So what are our storage options? Well, here's the old favourite, and look, they are cheap and they're colourful, but unfortunately they have zero or near zero ventilation. And here, here are some other uh, different options. Uh, there's the Hygienium, we'll see this in action in a moment, or the Cage, which is a sports mouth guard container which can hang off the back of your sports bag and is very popular amongst our uh, sports men and women. So let's pull all these together and wrap this up. Oral hygiene instruction, which can be easily understood by our patients in the chair and delivered in under a minute. Twice daily brushing with a soft brush and a soap-based gel, rinse with so uh, fresh water. Soak at least twice a week in an antibacterial solution for 10 to 30 minutes. Rinse thoroughly, so important. Air dry, hygienic, ventilated, protected storage. So important to deliver written instructions and then review all of this at our regular professional um, maintenance appointments to reinforce that oral hygiene message. So what does that look like? On the left, brush with one of these using one of these soap-based products in the middle and then rinse off afterwards. Do not use toothpaste. Soak it uh, at least a couple of times a week or as recommended by the manufacturer using one of these uh, in one of these on the right. And then storage uh, needs to be dry and well ventilated. Do not leave them soaking overnight. Sports mouth guards, the one on the left there is the Hygienic Quick Clean. It's not, a, it's not there for dry storage. In fact, it's going to prevent your mouth guard from drying out. I think of it as a pre-wash uh, and it'll stop your saliva and, and uh, germs and dirt from drying crusty on your sports mouth guard uh, straight after the game. So you take that to the game with you so that then when you get home, you can give your mouth guard the full treatment by brushing with one of those on the left with a soap-based product and then dry ventilated storage. And really, not just for our professional sports women, men and women, so important we get these messages out to the general community. So to wrap it up, uh, and thank you, for, I'm sorry, I'm a little over time, it's so important to incorporate best practice removable dental uh, uh, hygiene instructions into your existing preventive care and active maintenance programs, easily delivered in under 60 seconds. And finally, a very big thank you to Race Dental for giving me the platform to, to spread this important message. Also, thank you to my own company, Dr. Marks, for giving me the resources to do it also. And a big thank you to Dental Concepts who are now supplying our products throughout Australia. Thanks very much, Matt. Wow, Mark. Um, firstly, thank you for coming on and sharing your knowledge with not only us here at Race, but our, our platform across the Asia-Pacific region. Um, I never have, would have thought that some of that information um, was to be. Um, I was flabbergasted to hear that denture soaks actually can cause roughness where and inc incorporate added plaque and the retention of plaque. But um, I'm going to jump straight into the questions, Mark. We've got a few that's come in, Fire um, away. if that's okay with you. Yes. Um, uh, someone said, said here, with today's denture printing technology, you may wish to recommend uh, giving your patients two to three sets of dentures. And, uh, and with today's printing technology, Mark, we do see a lot of that um, where they've, once they go to, to final, they'll say, can you print two or three sets? I know that Betty and, and Mabus uh, on the way to bingo on a Wednesday night have a good opportunity of losing that denture. So having a spare one in the purse and one at home is probably no doubt a good idea. Your thoughts? Oh, a hundred percent. And look, you know, it, it sounds silly, but this is a very common occurrence. And certainly when patients are away on holidays or they're off visiting people, um, you know, you don't want to be without your without your aesthetics and your comfort. It, it, uh, in aged care, which I, you know, is my specific area, uh, if patients lose their dentures, you know, who wants to go and socialise 
with their family and friends without their teeth in, you know, and it's, uh, look, I think it's the most wonderful technology. Um, you know, I'll certainly be using it routinely from now on, a spare set, absolutely perfect. And uh, this is, you know, this is the future of, of denture construction, no doubt. I love it, mate. I do have one here that came in and I think you did answer it. It came in early on at the same. My patients do not like the idea of dishwashing liquids to, to clean dentures. As you do not recommend toothpaste, is there a better dental-specific product for cleaning dentures and appliances? Let me answer that for you. Uh, Dr. Mark's Dental Fresh. Um, it will no aggressive reduction of the denture like toothpaste and abrasion give. And the denture soaks uh, are probably not so recommended. But uh, Dr. Mark's uh, Dental Fresh is definitely going to answer that one. It does lead on to this question I have a little bit further down. Um, thank you for a great presentation, Mark. Where can we buy Dr. Mark's products? Uh, well, you know, certainly through dental, we have, we sell on Amazon, we have our own website, but uh, now through, for dental professionals, there's some great uh, wholesale bargains with dental concepts uh, if, if you're already buying uh, products from them, uh, or certainly on our website, there's a professional's uh, link as well. But uh, yeah, dental concepts for the dental professional, for, the, uh, for our uh, public customers, uh, straight to Amazon uh, or, or again onto our website. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, I've got an excellent question here. Um, the 3D printed dentures are made from lucitone. Are your recommendations the same for lucitone as they are for acrylic dentures? Yeah, look, it's 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 um, a good question. I think we just need to get back to the basics, really, in that it's, there's no doubt the new printed dentures are stronger. Uh, and they're smoother. And certainly, you know, uh, I think it's going to be, um, you know, the way forward. It is the way forward. But they still have irregularities. They still have a rugi in the palate. They still have, you know, that marge, the gingival margins. So uh, we, unfortunately, we still have to get in there and use a, a mechanical brush. Uh, and, and they're still going to collect biofilms. So we still need to use a soap-based product. So, you know, certainly, I think, the, the problem is going to be less with the new 3D printed dentures, but unfortunately, it's the, it's still the same problem. Yeah, look, Mark, there's no doubt they are stronger. And what I love about the printed dentures is the, the base is printed in lucitane, the teeth are printed in lucitane, and before their finally, um, final cure, they've, they're bonded together with lucitane and then cured as one. So ideally, they're a monolithic, monolithic product, so no more delamination or, or teeth uh, coming away from the base. So another great point and another tick for digital dentures um, we have had a number of those um, lectures, um, but there's a number of coming up as well. So one of our biggest questions at the moment, Mark, I'm going to continue on. I hear that titanium dioxide in sterident denture cleaning paste has been banned in Europe. Do you know anything more about this, please? Uh, look, I, I, I don't know anything more about it. Uh, what I do on a regular basis is walk through the supermarket in Australia and, and at pharmacies and see what our patients actually have to choose from. Uh, it's the only denture cleaning product that's, and it's not available everywhere, that has a, that has soap in it, which, um, so that's why I, I picked up on it. I'm not surprised it's been banned uh, because, you know, and this gets back to the fact we shouldn't be using uh, anything that's going to scratch, the, we shouldn't be using toothpaste to clean our dental appliances because it will scratch it. Toothpastes are wonderful for cleaning teeth and gums. They're not appropriate, uh, specifically appropriate for dental appliances. So, no, I haven't heard that, but I, I can't wait to Google that myself uh, as soon as we get offline. Yeah, and uh, thank you very much, Leone Short, for that. That's a very interesting point we look forward to. <laughs> Hi, Leone. Jump in there. So um, um, uh, to finish up, we have uh, one of my patients says they put their dentures in the dishwasher, Mark. Is this something you may think would work? Yeah, look, I, I think it would work. I think I've, you know, and, and certainly there's good science on microwaves as well. The the only problem with dishwashing uh, tablets is they're very, very corrosive. So uh, unfortunately, with the heat uh, and, and those chemicals, they are harsh chemicals, as you'd expect uh, to clean grease off with just a water a water brushing on them without actually mechanically washing them. So, uh, and that's oh, been proven, that's been proven to kill bacteria as well. 
but really all you're doing is you're baking on any plaque or germs or food scraps that are still on the dentures. So it's going to kill everything, but, you know, I don't want to be cooking food onto my dental appliance either. So, uh, yeah, look, I've heard of lots, of, I'm sure we've all heard of lots of different <laughs> cleaning strategies. Uh, I can't endorse uh, dishwashers. <laughs> well, that's um, good to know. And sometimes those dentures just get really crusty and, and very difficult to clean. Uh, feel free to lean on the lab, send them in, we'll sandblast them uh, and um, clean them and repolish them uh, as good as new. So lean on the lab where possible. We can do those within the hour. So our turnaround times are pretty effective. Um, for those of you that haven't used any of Dr. Mark's products, that genie is fantastic. We <laughs> use it in the lab. It's very simple to use. It's a simple, you know, how long do you recommend scrubbing that for, Mark? Yeah, for dentures, you know, sort of 30 to 40 seconds max for appliances that uh, are not you're not eating with. So occlusal splints, uh, orthodontic appliances, you know, you're really just there for sort of 10 or 15 seconds. But then after you've cleaned it, have a look at it. Uh, and then if you think it needs a little bit extra, get in there and go it again. But generally, if you're using it every day, around 30 to 40 seconds maximum uh, gets, keeps you covered. Uh, Matt, thank you. Yeah, they're absolutely awesome. As I said, we use them in the lab in our denture department. They're, they're fast and they're efficient and effective. So any of you guys that haven't um, got on board with the Genie, the High Genie products or any of Dr. Mark's products, jump on board. We love them and we recommend them uh, predominantly, especially with our uh, Alina products. So um, Mark, it's mandatory at the end of every lecture before I jump off the system here to throw you under a bus and to, is there anything one last point you'd like to leave us with is there anything you recommend or don't recommend you've got a one minute to let us know your thoughts yeah oh, thanks matt look you know it's and thank you again for the for the giving me the platform to spread this important message the reality is our patients just aren't looking after their appliances properly uh, and, and look, you know, you've only got to, you know, when was the last time you saw a clean denture walk into your surgery? Uh, unfortunately, to see a clean one is a rarity. We're not even checking our sports mouth guards after we issue them. It's sort of set and forget. We're not double checking down uh, on those as well. Uh, and look, you know, hopefully I've been able to share the science behind clean dental appliances uh, and, and general health and oral health. But at the end of the day, our patients just want a clean mouth. You know, they just want the dignity of fresh breath. Uh, so if for no other reason, you know, certainly introduce um, a, more time, even just an extra minute when you've issued a dental appliance to really nail down those oral hygiene instructions. Um, and, uh, you know, your patients will love you for it. Yeah, no doubt about it, Mark. Again, thank you very much. We've come, we've run out of time for today. Um, one last thing, don't forget the ACAS 23 Clear Alignment Symposium, 17th and 18th of Feb. Come and visit us at Stand 27. ADX 23 in Melbourne, March 30, April 1. Stand 5566. Come and visit the race team down there. I will be down there, so come and join us. No doubt. Mark will be down there as well, no doubt. He is everywhere with and everyone. Um, but again, thank you very much. We do appreciate everyone coming along today. Um, happy Valentine's Day. It's a great day to ensure your mouth is kept clean. I know it's a, a topic related well today, as Marissa was telling me how well these two subjects gel, Valentine's Day and oral hygiene. Mark, um, Catherine Garboon finishes here by saying happy Valentine's Day. Mark, great presentation. <laughs> thank you all, everyone. We'll see you next year. Thanks for coming. Stay safe. Yeah, thanks, man.